Away from politics now, and the Narcotics Control Board says it is collaborating with its British counterparts to unravel the circumstances uh, surrounding a middle-aged Ghanaian woman who was busted for trafficking about 12.5 kilograms of cocaine. Maele uh, Ametefe was arrested at the Heathrow Airport on November 10, 2014. Suggestions uh, that there are suggestions that she traveled on a diplomatic passport, something that has been vehemently de denied by government. And uh, also, the British Co High Commission here in Ghana says that it is untrue. Komla Fuche has more. A statement issued and signed by the Deputy Executive Secretary of NACOB, Richard Neil Lante Blankson, says one Miss Nayeli Ametapem was arrested on the 10th of November 2014 through the collaborative effort of NACOB and its British partner. On the 9th of November 2014, the accused boarded a British Airways flight number BA078 from Accra to London. She was arrested at Heathrow International Airport. The statement says she had flown on a first class ticket using travel miles on British Airways Point. The ticket had been checked in with tag number BA059501 and nothing of interest was found. But in another suitcase, which was believed to be hand carried into the plane, 10 kilograms of cocaine was found among her clothing. The cocaine was wrapped in one kilo blocks in her handbag. She had further two kilo blocks. Narkov says Miss Nayelia Metafet traveled on an Austrian passport number 4187659 and not on a Ghanaian diplomatic passport, as been speculated. The British High Commissioner to Ghana, John Benjamin, in a tweet, has denied Miss Nayele had a diplomatic passport. He tweeted, We can confirm that the person arrested did not have a Ghanaian diplomatic passport. But in a related development, the chief executive of CDFM, Samuel Atamensa, has been arrested by the BNI over a publication in connection with the cocaine bust. Samuel Atamensa was invited by the BNI Monday afternoon and has since been in their custody. CTFM News Editor Richard Mensah confirmed the invitation by BNI to TV3 but says he has not been heard from since his invitation. So the latest on that development is that the chief executive of CDFM, Samuel Atamensa, has been released. He was released uh, late uh, yesterday evening around uh, 7.30 thereabout. And so he's uh, a free man. And the playback we just brought to you was to give you a background of what has gone on in the last 24 hours. So let's make progress now. And we've been joined on the line by Suleiman Abraima. He's the Executive Director of Media Foundation for West Africa to throw some light on the issues that have uh, arisen as a result of yesterday's happenings and how that plays out for the media and for state security agencies and also institutions like the National Media Commission that ha are supposed to be regulators of the media happenings in Ghana. Uh, Mr. Brimer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Right, I would want to first of all start from the perspective of how state institutions like the security institutions and the media can work out. Now, when a media house publishes a story and it is found out to be libelous or untrue, what is the role of an institution like the BNR in working with the media house? Well, um, first of all, let me let me state uh, that as far as the operations of the BNI um, is concerned, I wouldn't claim to know much about what the parameters are for them mm -hmm. in terms of their operation. But generally, we know that um, the BNI is a state security institution, and therefore. Um, anything that they feel borders on state security, I suppose they have the right to, to act um, as they, they are allowed to by law. Uh, in the same vein, I think that the laws of this country also entitles the media to some fundamental rights, and it's also because the media have a role to play in terms of national development. And even the national development also has something to do with national security. So the media also have their own rights and responsibilities in terms of national development. Um, I think that we are raising the issue of yesterday's invitation right. of Mr. Tamensa because um, one wonders uh, how a media manager 
you know, should be invited by security, uh, a security agency on the basis that some story or some information has been put out by that media house mm -hmm. that turns out to have some um, inaccuracies. Right. And I say some inaccuracies because if you look at the statement that is put out by NACOB and also by the Minister for Information, um, you realize that there are certain things that are confirmed in the CDFM original story. Yes. For example, it is true that someone has been arrested. It is true that we are talking about um, a quantity of about 12 kilo, kilos of cocaine. Right. And it is true that the person you know, uh, traveled through Kutuka International Airport. Right. So there are, there are bits and pieces of the story that is true. Of course, there are others that the statements from the from the narcotics control board and the minister for communication mm. contradict. So um, I think that we are all alarmed by the fact that the BNI will just pick in, uh, invite somebody, uh, detain the person on the basis that the media house have put out a story yes, that we feel contains some inaccuracy. Okay, and then so staying with this particular bit about publications and media houses, what is the role of for instance, the National Media Commission. And do you not think that if there are some falsehoods that come out as a result of publication or you know being on air or in print or online, what really is their mandate? And what do they do in collaboration with the state security institutions? Well, uh, as we all know, the, the National Media Commission is mandated by the Constitution to ensure higher professional standards um, of our media and within that framework there is a provision in the uh, or a mechanism that allows people who feel offended by a media publication to seek redress through the complaints committee of the national media commission beyond that i think it is um, allowed or it is actually um, um, something that is recommended that people who feel offended also have the uh, the the they can also um, regress through uh, rejoinders. And beyond that, even as we have the criminal libel law repealed, people can still go to the court to seek redress if they feel offended or slighted by a publication. And so the, the mechanisms are available, and it's not just the National Media Commission. Mm. Uh, as I said, people can resort to rejoinder, people can go to the court, uh, people can complain to the GJA, and so on and so forth. And so um, that is why it is quite surprising that it is the, the BNI that in this context um, is involved. And I should quickly add that um, on, on the second of this month, uh, an occasion to mark the UN Day of Safety of Germany, you know, we did present a paper. And in that presentation, we did an analysis of incidents of violations of press freedom over the last 10 years. Right. And it turned out that more than a third of all violations in this country are perpetrated by you know, security agencies, state security agencies. And that is extremely worrying because if we tout ourselves as being free when it comes to media freedom and we have state apparatus or state institutions abusing you know, the rights of journalists, the, the detentions, arrests, you know, uh, destruction of equipment and so on and so forth, mm. then it's becoming increasingly worrying. All right, then finally before I let you go, I know you said that you are not an authority on the activities of the BNI. But we would want to find out from you, looking at the, the fact that you are with the Media Foundation for West Africa, can state security institutions invite media practitioners, media journalists or owners of the media houses, if they think they can get some information that can help them in you know, investigating an issue? And how, what kind of, how should the invitation be done? Well, of course. I mean, we all have an obligation to support the state to be secure. Uh, whether you are a journalist, you are a teacher, or whatever. Uh, and mind you, we are not at all by any means saying that journalists are people who cannot be touched, or journalists can violate the laws of our land and go free because they are journalists. Mm -hmm. You know, because the state must be secure before one can even practice journalism. Exactly. So if we are in a very chaotic um, situation, you know, journalists themselves are at risk. And so, yes, state institutions can always, you know, resort to journalists or other individuals that they feel have some information that will be helpful in terms of protecting the state. Right. But under the circumstance, you know, um, yesterday, for example, we are told, you know, 
he was invited, he got there, they detained him for, for four hours, denied him access to his lawyers. I, I think that those are the, the, the things that are so worrying. But otherwise, if they invited him and said, well, we need you to help us with this and that and that, and he had the information to give to them, I don't think that it would have been an issue at all. Mm -hmm. We would have just been hearing that, okay, BNI has invited him. And then he would come and say, oh, I went and they wanted to find out from me about this and about that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that it would have been an issue at all. But the way they went about it, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, really triggered you know, some level of embarrassment for government. And at this stage, I don't really know what they have achieved mm -hmm. you know, um, by the way they went about it. Well, the, the whole process. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Suleiman Brahima. He is the executive director for Media Foundation for West Africa, uh, throwing some perspectives on the issue that had to do with um, the invitation of uh, the chief executive of CDFM, Samuel Atamensa, over a publication that the, his outfit is said to have put out, which had some falsehoods and some truths. I will see how it pans out in the in the coming days. This is still midday live on TV three.